everyone. Hello. It's Nikki and Rachel from the Stitch Sisters and we're talking about Me Made May today mm. and what we have learned from this year's Me Made May Challenge. Lots of things. Yes. Lots of useful things. It's been, uh, it was my second year. It was mm. your second year as well. Yeah. Doing yep. it. And obviously I had a much bigger Me Made wardrobe this year than I did last yeah. year. Uh, so I committed to doing every weekday. Mm -hmm. And what did you, you were every day, weren't you? Every day, yeah. So head my to pledge toe. was head to toe with the exclusion of underwear, basically. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I did stick to that. Um, I think I allowed myself one exception, which was a pair of ready to wear dungarees and a pair of ready to wear jeans. I did yes. wear my dungarees two or three times. I only wore jeans once. Right. So, right. you know, I think yeah. maybe on four days out of 31, I might have had, uh, something ready to wear. And I did live in my ready to wear mustard cardi though. Oh yes. If you, you can't, follow me on Instagram, I've always got it on. You can't separate her from that. No exactly. Matter how hard to try. Like it. <laughs> I only had it a short while, but it looks like I've had it about 10 years. It's yes, so lovely. <laughs> it's lovely. I got to I buy another one to replace it. I, so it. I did it this year, just have it, as long as I wore something that was me made, it yeah. didn't matter. And I'm not as strict about it as you. I, you know, if I've got jeans and a me made t-shirt on, yeah. that's fine for me. I'm quite yeah. happy with that. Mm -hmm. Because it is still encouraging me to wear the stuff yeah. that's in my wardrobe. Yeah. It's funny though, because I went into it with a different approach this year, and I think mm -hmm. you did as well. So last year, because we were new to Instagram, we were new to the challenge, so it was all just about sort of showing off stuff that you'd made. Yeah, made because yeah, exactly. um, most of the people that I followed and that followed me had no idea kind of mm. what was in my wardrobe. So it was more just sort of putting it out there for the first time. Whereas yeah. this year I took a much more measured approach to it and I actually wanted to learn some things about my wardrobe. I wanted to learn, uh, I wanted to force myself to wear things mm -hmm. that I don't usually wear. Things that I've made but yeah. don't get worn so that I could try and figure out why. Yeah. Um, and make alterations. And I did, and I did yeah. get a big pile of alterations at the end, yeah. which I started to make my way through. Um, I have also ditched quite a few things as well that I just decided, um, even to put a poll up on Instagram and see what people thought, I, I still couldn't bring myself to wear certain things. Okay. Um, I couldn't find anything to go with them, and I've had them so long that if I still haven't found anything to go with them now, no, it's just not, not going to happen. I know I've cut my losses. Yeah, exactly. Give them, give them the way to the charity shop or something yeah. like that. Someone else will find something to do. Yeah, exactly. And how did you find it? I found it, I really enjoyed it this year. I think it's one of those things, it is very enjoyable in the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Week one and week two were an absolute breeze. Yeah. And I was planning the night before what I was going to wear. And I even oh, prepared, because I'm, so, I'm such an organisation freak. I remember on the last day of April, going through my entire washing basket and mm. ironing basket and I had everything washed and yeah. ironed and hung in the wardrobe. I remember you proudly ready. telling me, I've ironed all my stuff for me it's made already. May. And I was like, oh dear, mine's <laughs> in a big pile on the floor. But that's that's <laughs> what makes me happy because then I can go to my wardrobe and everything is there. And so if I've got an... Uh, 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 if I decide that I want to wear something, I know yeah. that it's going to be there. But towards the end, my pictures definitely dried up towards <laughs> the end. That last I week. ran out of steam a little bit oh, as well. Because it's such a long month as yeah, well. Yeah, I was still doing it, but there were days when I was like, oh, I just want to put my pyjamas on, or I yeah. just want to wear my jeans. And, and I'm not saying that you have to post every day. I know lots no. of people don't post every day. And we didn't towards day. the end. Um, but it was mainly because I'd, I'd given myself this challenge of seeing what was in my wardrobe. And I yeah. Knew that I needed to wear something every day to have a chance of getting through it. I still yeah. didn't wear most of it, but you know, I wanted to at least give myself a chance. Mm. But the thing I did like about it mm -hmm. is it did force me to make a bit more of an effort every day than I would normally. Yes, and and I think there's something to be said for your self esteem if if you feel good about how you've dressed uh, yeah. every day. If you um, put an effort in, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And even if that is just that you're wearing something me made that is making you feel nice, and you've put a bit of yeah. Makeup on because you're taking the picture yeah then it, I think you end up being um feeling more confident for the rest of the day yeah exactly but again we're not saying that that's the right thing to do no. it's entirely <laughs> up to you and, and being in your pajamas is totally cool yes. as well it's just and what we chose to do and there are plenty of days that we spend oh. in our God, trackies yes. and jumpers and yes sort of and sometimes those are the best days yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly so we thought that a useful way to kind of show you what we've learned over me made may was yep. to come up with a list of points a list of key points we just got five <laughs> basic points that we've each sort of learned and we'd already planned to do this but then we were tagged by um there's Stitches a new hashtag going yeah. around me made main lessons yeah 
and we were tagged by Vivian from Stitch, Stitch and Seams. So yeah. we thought we'll use the tag and if anyone else wants to use it, we'd love to hear what you've learned yeah. during Me Made Mate as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So, do you want to give me your number one? What's your number one Me Made Me lesson? My number one Me Made Me lesson is that I have way too many clothes. Shock horror. Shock horror for Like me. we didn't know that. Shopaholic. I, a shopaholic. Yeah. And I, I'm a makeaholic. And I, I, I previously was a shopaholic. Still so shopaholic. I'm still, still quite a shopaholic. <laughs> I'm not as bad as I used to be. No, no, no. But you still... But I still would like, like to do both making and shopping. Yes. I won't restrict myself to not buying something if I, if I fall in love with it. Or if I think I need it for my wardrobe. Yeah. But that has caused a problem mm. in the fact that I have way too many clothes yeah. now. So my main thing that I have decided is that um, I'm going to have a massive cull. So I'm going to do it seasonally. So at the end of the summer, because I'm having a lot of work done during the summer and things. So once all that's done and once everything is calmed down and the summer's finished and I'm ready to put my summer clothes away, I'm going to go through it all. And I'm going to look at what I didn't wear and why I didn't wear it. And I'm going to possibly some me made things I might put away mm -hmm. and decide like that in a separate box or something to say, yes. look at that next year, yeah. you didn't wear it. And if you still don't think you will wear it this year, mm -hmm. then give it away or cool. do something with it. But also I need to have a cull of stuff that I've had in my wardrobe for years that I've bought that I'm not wearing because I've now made nicer things that I've made myself. Yes. So and then you this, get the double whammy of yeah. wearing it because it looks nice, but exactly. also getting a little boost because you made it. And yes. You're proud of and not just because it was cheap in the shops or it was in the sale or something like that. So there will be there'll be be some culling going on over the next year. Can I'm I just, get first? Glance. You can definitely get first dibs on anything. <laughs> One man's <laughs> trash. <laughs> <and a little laughs> <glance>. <laughs> But I've always, I've, I've struggled uh, for a while because I'm adding so much into my wardrobe that it's just, I can't, I can't see what's in there anymore. So mm. I need to, I need to have a proper cull. Yeah. But I'm going to get through the summer and not worry about it and then start doing it. Sounds like on. a good plan. Yes. What was your number one? My number one was exactly the same. Yay! <laughs> my number one is that I too have way too many clothes, way too many me made clothes. So I am 95% me made yeah um, and i do that most days anyway not just for me made may no um but um i could have done three months i could have yeah. done me made may june and july and i probably still wouldn't have worn everything that i've made and you wouldn't have doubled up no i probably wouldn't have had no. any repeats i could have kept going as well yeah I, yeah i didn't repeat at all in the month yeah and neither did you but what that shows me is i have got too many clothes yeah. as well um but too many me made clothes um and i don't necessarily want to get rid of any of them that's the problem mm. i have tried i've tried to cull them but there are things that i seem to be attached to that for whatever reason and, and I've had really vicious clear outs in the past. Yeah. And then what happens is that a year later or two years later, I'll go, oh, do you know what I really need is I need a skirt. And, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I'll think I had one and yeah. I got rid of it. So okay. I don't really want to get rid of anything. Maybe we need to, to set I want up a, to... a storage building or something. <laughs> We store clothes. Well, at the moment, I store them in them. the loft, and I think I'll keep doing that for now. <laughs> okay. But if it was required I in the a warehouse, future, <laughs> then we'll, we'll hire a warehouse between us and we'll fill it with me made. The Stitch Sisters <laughs> Closet <laughs> Warehouse. <laughs> um, but there's a few people who would pay money to get the keys to that if that actually oh, yeah. existed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. We'll do it on a giveaway. We'll do it on a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours in the Stitch Sisters <laughs> Warehouse. Um, but the main thing that I've learned from that the fact that I have got too many clothes is that I need to be a little bit more um selective when I choose to make things and that means that I need mm -hmm. to think about what is already there so yeah. when I want to make a new pair of trousers because I found a lovely new trouser pattern and I'm desperate mm -hmm. to make them then I need to think about myself to think to myself what trousers have I already got in my wardrobe yeah and what function are they filling yes so if I've already got black cigarette pants I don't need black cigarette pants. Yes. If I've already got some blue wide leg trousers, I don't yeah. need more blue wide leg trousers. No. Um, but that doesn't also doesn't mean that you need to make a red pair because yeah. you already have a blue pair. No. It's, it's, I think it's looking at it as 
is that enough? Is, is yeah, the exactly. enough in exactly. your wardrobe? If so, there is a, an actual hole in your wardrobe of where that absolutely. item would fill, yeah. then go for but it. But I think that's what I need to do is I need to start thinking, because I've got too many clothes, I need to start thinking about one in, one out type thing. So yes. if I really want to make something, um, is it replacing something that I've already got in my wardrobe? Do I need them both? And if I don't, then, and I'm desperate to make the new one, then maybe I need to lose the old one. Yes. I'll, or when I say lose, I mean put that in storage. Yeah. Clearly. yeah I mean loose because I've just said I don't want to get rid of anything. No. Um, so yeah, that's the main thing I think for that. Okay. Is really too many so that kind of leads me on to my second point. So yep. point number two, two. second me made lesson that I've mm -hmm. learned is that I'm going to start shopping my closet. Yes. And what I mean by that mm -hmm. is that I'm not going to get rid of anything. Yeah. I'm going to put it all up in the loft. And then each season, I'm going to get everything down. Yes. And I'm going to decide what I'm into that season. So what colours I like, what styles I like, what fashions there are, mm -hmm. um, and what fabrics I, I am drawn to and that sort of thing. Um, and then I will shop from my own closet. I'll pick out the key pieces out of my Me Made May, um, not Me Made May, no, Me Made wardrobe. Me made, yes. <laughs> All of all of the things that I think might work for, for that, that season, season, right? And then I'll put everything else back in the loft. Okay. And then I can look at what I've got and work out what I need to sort of yes to make add it work. to that to make it work. Yeah. So, so almost to create a collection. So yes. I, I just think that. I'll do that before I do anything else. So instead mm -hmm. of just sort of randomly collecting patterns that I like and fabrics that I like, yes. I'm just going to wait and then each season review my wardrobe, yeah. decide what I'm keeping or using for that season mm -hmm. and then work out what I need and then going off and trying to potentially match the fabrics and the patterns that I've already got, but if not looking yeah. for the thing that's just right. Yes. I think that's very clever actually because I, I think what I struggle with is actually seeing the wood from the trees. Yeah. So actually having it all in your wardrobe is yeah. sometimes just too much. Yeah. And I, I, have, I have done that this year mm -hmm. whereas I've, in the transition between spring and summer, I've brought my, ward, my summer wardrobe up bits yeah. at a time. So there's some things that were in my wardrobe that haven't come up until about two weeks ago when mm -hmm. the weather got properly hot yeah. because I wouldn't wear them otherwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think actually having more of a capsule wardrobe that you yeah. wear. Yeah, and it is, is hard better. in this country because the weather does change all the time. Yes. So, you know, just because it's summer doesn't mean you just need summer things. You no. do still need jumpers and you do still need jeans and you do still need coats and yeah. things because you just never know when the weather's going to change. Well, you, it depends what um, you're doing. As so well, it's not it? exactly going to be a capsule wardrobe each season because, no. you know, there probably will be, be bigger more than things yeah. than there would be in a, in a capsule wardrobe. Mm -hmm. um, but... I just like the idea of making sure that I've got some separates, that I've got different layers, um, yes. and that I've got some dresses, you mm -hmm. know, I've got a couple of going out outfits if I've got a special occasion or something. My loft, I should point out, is not easily accessible, <laughs> there's not a proper ladder for it, I can't I get up there. We need, we need a, a, a lock up, that's yes. what we need. <laughs> send my husband up to get all these clothes down and clearly he's it's not, not happy about it's not it like and he, yeah so I can't ask him to do that often <laughs> which I think is good because what it means is once it's up there it's up there and yeah. I can ask him to bring that stuff down once every three months but he's not going to want to do it any more often than that no. so it means that I'm kind of locked in whatever yeah. choices I've made I'm st I'm stuck with those yeah and that's a good thing because I think if it was yeah. too accessible I would suddenly go oh yeah. but I really want those trousers on I'm just gonna go up and get those um, and yeah. this will mean I have to stick to it and sometimes uh, you know if it's not accessible how important is it if exactly. you actually wear those trousers exactly. today you yes. could wear another pair of trousers yes. and it would be fine exactly so i'm excited yeah. because we're already in summer and i feel like i'm going to work with what i've already got down yes. for now um i've already got him after me made made to put everything that i didn't want back in the loft and i've yeah. kept the things that i think will work for me this summer mm -hmm. um and then i can start now thinking about autumn oh, i'm so excited about autumn already this year i'm very excited but anyway my number two yes is I need more separates. Mm -hmm. I am a separates girl. Definitely. I don't particularly. I can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like a dress as much as I do a uh, a skirt and a top, or a pair of trousers and a top, or jeans and a top. Yeah. Um. I. I. Uh, what I have discovered about myself in me mid May is that I. I will only wear summer dresses when it is properly hot. Yeah. I don't like being cold. I don't particularly like getting my legs out until it's at least at 22 degrees every day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to put up with uh, being cold. So I'd rather have more separates in my wardrobe where I can I can bring them in. Yeah. So I need to make jeans. I need to make more trousers. Definitely more trousers because I wear trousers a lot. Yeah. Um, comfortable skirts. 
and uh, tops and shirts. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking shirts with a variety of different sleeve lengths. So short sleeves, which I can put a cardigan over if, if I want to. Yeah. So I could even wear that into the autumn time and things yeah. like that. So more um, transitional pieces, but also more separates. Yes, okay. So that, that was a big thing things for me. Things you can layer. Things I can yeah. layer and things I can put on with mainly with jeans because mm. I do love my jeans. Yeah. Um, so, and even in the summer, I wear cut off jeans and jean denim skirts and things like that. So things I can wear with those, yes. I think is essential for me. And I even, as in front of some of my pictures, when I posted in Me Made May, Mm. I gave myself little comments underneath and said, note to self, make this again. Uh -huh. Make another one of these. I really love wearing it. So I'm going to go back over all my pictures and I'm going to look and see what those notes were as yes. I was wearing things. And that's where I'm going to start. Excellent. So, that sounds good. Yeah. What is your number three? My number three is, it comes from what I've just said. Mm -hmm. So it's more transitional pieces. Okay. So because I think I'm, I'm set for my high summer wardrobe. So my my summer in the UK and holiday wardrobe, I think I'm set for. Okay. Um, I'm also quite good for winter. Yeah. Because I like, although I do need to make jeans, so that's uh, but that I know that's on the list. But that's around. They're cut. Yeah. They're cut out, ready to sew. So mm -hmm. I'm fine for the first pair. So um, I'm fine for the depths of winter, and I'm fine for the, the height of summer. It's those in between stages. It's that layering again. It's yeah. having separates. It's having more choices of um, shirts and um, shirts, particularly because I do love a shirt, mm. uh, and I wear. I would wear shirts instead of t-shirts yeah so i think a shirt and a cardigan or a blouse and a cardigan with a skirt because you can wear it but you can dress it up and you can dress it down yeah. as well so i think things like that transitional pieces is what i'm mostly yeah. after okay excellent mm. and have you thought about fabrics do you know what sort of thing you want are you looking um, at sort of wovens and cottons or rather than knits yeah so, i'm thinking yeah. wovens and cottons because i'm thinking mostly shirts mm -hmm. i'm also thinking i definitely want to make another cali shirt yeah because i love my number cali shirt and every time i put it on i feel fabulous in it Excellent. so i need to make another one yeah. but that's crepe but it's a it's a head yeah crepe. so crepes viscose so is lighter fabric so lighter that fabric thinking, because yeah. i the good thing about that is i could i could wear a cardigan over it yeah i also sometimes wear a vest under it so if i want the feeling because it's quite floaty and I'm not good with really floaty things so if I wear a close fitting vest underneath it mm -hmm. then I've got that feeling of closeness and if it, I just feel as if it's layered you really don't like being cold I really don't like being cold it's just <laughs> I'm gonna buy some thermals for it's a bit, terrible so. <laughs> but um so I'd rather you know unless it's the, the temperatures like it is at the moment I will always layer up yeah so but then that's something I've known about myself for a long time and I think it's a lesson that me made me has shown me yeah it's because there was days where it was really cold in May mm -hmm. and it was really wet and I was I struggled I struggled yeah. with what to put on and I was looking for things to wear with jeans because the weather was miserable yeah and I couldn't find anything so or, or I'd worn it already or things like that so it's, it's definitely more separate it's more transitional pieces mm -hmm. so. cool Cotton shirts. Funnily enough, I bought a load of cotton shirting when we went to Dowdy. Wow. You're it was like, I knew what I was going to do. Well, then that was after me made May, so you'd had time yes, to think about it. Yes, I had time to think about it. So what cool. was your number three? My number three is that I want to um, focus on making things that really test myself, that really test my skills. Yeah. I want to build my skills. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to stick in the safe zone. I get so much more enjoyment. I'm two thirds or three quarters of the way through sewing the Isla trench coat. I just yes. haven't had had time to put the lining in the jacket but everything else is done and I cannot tell you how much joy and satisfaction I got mm -hmm. from making that I just love it everything mm -hmm. from the welt pockets to the the little collar belt and uh, the, the col sleeve belt the collar and... belt it was like it was I was so happy heaven. I know <laughs> it's just I love that kind of those details yeah. I love taking my time making sure the finish is really good and mm -hmm. just feeling really 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 proud of it at the end and, yeah. and I just think that I would much much rather spend my sewing time mm -hmm. on things that are really pushing me making me a better sewer um instead of just bashing out quick top yeah. dresses and stuff 
And I have a tendency. What you need. Yeah, I mean, I have a tendency them. in the past to have made a lot of knit stuff just because it's so comfy yeah. to wear, and because I'm so lazy and I don't like to iron things. Yeah, I didn't wear this shirt dress during Me Made May, even though I love it, simply because it's pleated all the way around and I couldn't even iron it. It needs a good time <laughs> of ironing every time um, you wear it. And then, yeah, so and but I just need to stop being so lazy because I love wearing it and I love yeah. wearing those kind of things and I love making those kind of things. But also, you're restricting yourself. You're it's another restriction you're putting on your wardrobe and yeah your wardrobe, exactly. but you're only wearing the things that are easy that are look, looking good yeah you know yeah and cotton things do take a little bit more effort but yeah you know. they do but they're totally worth it Absolutely. So, so that's that's now my number three is to build my skills mm. and to sew things that test me a little bit yes and not stay in the safe zone D no but not in the safe zone funnily enough my number four is mm -hmm. quite uh, similar because okay. obviously you building your skills um, for the next year will also mean that I will be doing that as well because we don't do anything separate. But I want to make more outerwear. That's my number four. Yeah. Because I I always struggle with coats and jackets. Yeah. Uh, because I am tall and because I have long arms. Mm -hmm. So the amount of times I've fallen in love with a jacket in the shop and I've put it on and the sleeves have come to there. And it's not going to work. I prefer sleeves down past. You like them extra long. I like as them well, extra don't long. You? Yeah. So I, because I think it's that paranoia yeah. that if they're right on my wrist, mm -hmm. if I move and they're up here, I just feel like a giant. It feel, oh. I feel like I've, I've shrunk my jacket or I've grown out of my jacket. Yeah. And I don't like that so I'd rather it was long and I didn't get that feeling mm. so I need to make my own yeah and I've had a great joy with making my bomber jacket recently yes. I absolutely love that bomber jacket mm -hmm. and every time Me I too. put it on it feels fantastic so I'm going to make a few more of them yeah um, I'm also halfway through making the Christina Hayes um, Ells Ellsworth yeah Ellsworth uh, trench coat um, and I have loved that as well mm -hmm. so I do want to concentrate on uh, more outerwear yeah. I also have about five or six coat fabrics that I bought from um, fabrics in the sale mm -hmm. um, a few months ago so I, clearly I was planning even before me and May yeah. to make more jackets and, and coats so Excellent. that's something but then that is the skill builder as well yeah that's, absolutely that's so doing we things to build our skills together yeah which are taking time one of the things that yeah. build your skills better than anything there's so many different details absolutely them. and then it's kind and the of fabric yeah so. exactly so i think that there's there's a mm. lot of mileage in that definitely and um, my number four is to make it last oh yes so i noticed there's a few things that when i got them out for me mm -hmm. made may and not worn them for a while um that i'd either been a bit lazy and not bothered with the finish on the inside um or i made them out of cheaper fabrics and yes they weren't standing the test of time so there are things mm. that i like but are looking tired and mm. they, some of them haven't even had that much wear and i think that's just because i didn't really uh take the time and the effort to make sure that i'd chosen the best possible fabric and I'd given it the best possible finish inside yeah. and out so that is a big lesson for me because mm. there's nothing worse than loving something and then realizing that it's it's just not going to last you no. um, if you I love it you want to keep it for as long as possible and that means making it top quality absolutely but I think as a sewer that's something we all go through in our yeah in our learning process in our journey in our journey <laughs> to being better sewers at the end that we all make things quickly sometimes mm -hmm. because you're so desperate it to because you found the perfect fabric for the perfect thing yeah. and you can't wait so you can't you don't even finish your seams or anything like that yeah. inside and i have a few things like that where mm -hmm. where it comes out of the wash and i have to trim my seams Before every you time put it i can, on, I yeah. can put it back on yeah. and and I, I agree with you it just it's it's not worth it in the long run no it's just you know the time and effort that you spend it doesn't take that much longer to make no. it to last no it doesn't mm -hmm. um and i just think you get a much greater sense of satisfaction out of it as well and knowing that it's a key piece and also if you're thinking about what you're making a little bit more mm -hmm. then you're less likely to it's less likely to be something that you go off or you don't want to wear anymore yeah so um so the fact that you've spent a long time on it it's not been a waste whereas i think what i've done in the past is kind of the opposite and i've done lots of making to scratch an itch so i fancy sewing yeah i'm gonna take that fabric from my stash and i'm gonna match it with that pattern and i'm gonna sew so that just because I can just because I've got time just because mm -hmm. I've got the bits that I need but is that the perfect fabric for that pattern and do I really need that 
item in my wardrobe at the moment yeah and am i actually going to wear it and on a lot of the time the answer has been no but i've done it because i've got an itch to scratch yes so i need to stop doing that yeah absolutely but then if you're making things that are taking longer yes you won't have as many if they're taking to longer if i'm testing my skills if i'm making sure the finish yes. is really good then mm -hmm. you know i'm, I'm not going to do that unless it's something i've thought about and yeah. i actually really want it or need it yes number five number five have that <laughs> Is, uh, is our final one and mine is just to be more considered mm -hmm. in my making in the future yep in all things yeah I'm saying it's about purchasing patterns purchasing fabrics having an idea about what I'd like to make that fabric out of just because I've seen it doesn't mean that it's actually a necessity for my wardrobe mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking about taking my time and choosing to make something yes so having two or three weeks where if I decide I need a new jacket that I really think about which pattern is right mm -hmm. and which fabric is right shopping my stash yeah. as well which is really important to me because I have way too much fabric as well mm -hmm. as way too many clothes yeah um so shopping my stash first before I do um any online shopping yeah. or buy any additional fabrics and just being more considered about whether I actually need that yeah do I need another Bitting dress mm -hmm. if I've already got three. Yes. It's you know, just because yeah. I can make it doesn't yeah. mean that I should. Yeah, and I think doing that will also make you more considered in your fabric buying as well. Yeah. Because unless it's a fabric that you love and you just can't yes. not buy, yeah. um, then you know you probably don't need that either. <laughs> no. Um so yeah. if you're buying fabric because you're matching it to a specific project, yes. then it's gonna be the perfect fabric. Um, so it means that you'll probably be adding less to your stash because you'll be being yeah. more considered about what you what you're absolutely for it. absolutely. So that was my five. Excellent. That's your five. My fifth one, number five, number um, five. is basically cancelling out all the others. <laughs> <laughs> This is my caveat, and I just wrote down three words, three letters, and the word is joy. Joy! joy. <laughs> because I cannot tell you how much joy I got from making that bomber jacket recently. Yeah. And it taught me such a valuable lesson. And there were a couple of other things that I wore during me made May. So the only way I can describe them is that they just bring me joy. They yeah. just make, make me you happy. so happy. Yeah. Um, wearing them makes me happy. Making them made me happy. Mm. And I just mm. love them. And I think all of these rules aside, Yes. There is one thing that can rule out anything else that mm. if it's something that just makes me that happy, yeah, brings me that much joy, the idea Absolutely. of it brings me that much joy, then I'm not going to worry about whether I've already got one in my wardrobe and no. I'm not going to worry about whether that's part of what I've shopped from my closet yeah. that season. I'm not going to worry about whether it's building my skills yeah. um, or whether it, you know, it, I'm still going to make it last. Um, yes. But as for the other things, I'm not going to worry about them so much because if the idea of it makes me that happy, I just yeah. need to make it. Yeah, absolutely. So joy absolutely. cancels out everything else. Just, I, I'm going to go for a number six and I'm going to add that as well. Joy! So, joy! <laughs> <laughs> I think because in life in general, absolutely. if it makes you really happy, yeah. do it. But if, if you think about your wardrobe and you think about the things in your wardrobe, yes. you th the things that you love are yeah. the things that you think about. Yes. It's not the, the top that you bought from Marks and Spencer's three years ago because you needed a yeah. green top. Yeah. It's the things that you've made that you're most proud of. Yes. That you feel fabulous in yeah. and that you enjoyed making. Yeah. And do you know, that's just made me think a really interesting thing. So who, when they look at their fabric stash, strokes things yeah. and just goes, Oh, oh, you're lovely. Oh, you're lovely too. Yeah. But do you do that to the things in your wardrobe? Because I don't. There are very few things in my wardrobe that I would want to hug in the way that I you might do hug fabric. fabric. And maybe that's just because I'm not doing enough things that bring me joy. Because yeah. if I loved them that much, I would want yeah. to stroke you're and hug not, the clothes when they're finished as much as I did the fabric. You're loving the fabric, but what you're turning them into isn't giving you as much it's joy as the fabric mark, itself. Yeah, either yeah. because it's not made well enough or because it's not the right thing for me. Yeah. Um, so all of those things added together, I think are gonna make my making much better yes. in the next year. Yes. And absolutely. it'll be really interesting to report back after me made May, this time next year and yeah. see if we've actually put those lessons into practice yeah. and whether we've actually made a difference. I think we should possibly do it before then. I think we should do one maybe after Christmas. Yeah. So we see do if it six works. months. Yeah, six months because to see if we've applied these principles yes. and actually made a difference. Or whether they've all gone out the window and I've just been making whatever takes my fancy. 
happy for the next couple of months and shopping like a maniac. Well, if it brings you joy, it's it allowed. makes me joy. <laughs> That's the get out of jail. Powers. That's the caveat. All caveats. So to finish up, we thought yeah. we would leave you with a little lookbook from both of us. For yes. our Me Made May lookbooks. So we're going to put some quick slideshows up showing yeah. all of my outfits in Me Made May until and we got bored and didn't take any more selfies. Yes. Um, so we hope you've enjoyed it. Here are our lookbooks. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Oh,